Hello and welcome. Welcome to the next project in the DevOps project series. The name of this project is Continuous Delivery with Jenkins and Tools. So if you have done continuous integration project, this is just an extension of that project, Continuous Delivery. First, we'll understand what is Continuous Delivery, what are the problems that it solve, and then we'll set up the Continuous Delivery Pipeline. Okay, so this is the scenario. There, uh, there is a product development happening with Agile SDLC. So all these developers are making regular code changes and building the product. And in an Agile SDLC, developer will make regular code changes. And all these code changes which, which gets merged with your remote repositories needs to be built, tested, and also needs to be deployed to servers for further software testing or performance testing or load testing. So before even it gets promoted to the production, there are so many tests that happens first on the code that happens in the continuous integration pipeline. And then after delivering the code to the servers, more tests, tests are conducted. So once the code is packaged into an artifact, it will be deployed to servers, maybe staging servers, and then there will be more tests conducted like software testing, integration testing, load testing, performance testing. And if this test reports checks out fine, then only you get approval to deploy your changes to production. Now we have to understand we are working in an agile environment. There'll be frequent code changes and all these changes needs to be deployed to different, different servers, which is called as delivery and which will be very time consuming if this process is manual. And moreover, the op ops team will not be able to cope up with such frequent changes. They will not be able to deploy it so frequently if the process is manual. And moreover, here comes a lot of dependencies. The developer will be dependent on build and release team. Those teams will be dependent on operations team. And the interaction in between these teams will be happening through ticketing system or through emails and some fancy tools also. But my point is there are too much of dependencies, too many tools involved, which actually delays the process of delivery. So developer, as fast as they're developing the code, not at the same speed or not at the same pace, the code is delivered to the server. One thing is for sure in this fast moving world, whenever there is a code change, this code needs to be built, tested, deployed, and then tested more further before you deploy to production system. And if this has to be done for every commit, every pull request, then this process needs to be automated process. And whatever you build, you test or deploy, all for every place there should be a notification Every task completion or failure, there should be a notification. If something fails, the product owner, whosoever is the responsible developer or a tester will get into it and fix those problems, even operations team. So if there is any bug in a code that can be isolated very quickly and developers can work on making the code change, making all the fix and patches, and then this automated process can repeat again. So completely automated build, test, deploy, test, deploy, test, Okay, this entire process is called as continuous delivery process. And mind you here, the word delivery really means delivering it till pre-production. So your artifact is really ready now to deploy to production. We have not deployed to production. We're still waiting for the approval. We have delivered it to all the pre-prod environment and even tested it and we are ready to deploy it on production. We just need the approval. That's what is continuous delivery process. And we'll understand it much better by doing it. Some common benefits about continuous delivery is you can resolve any issue quickly. So you don't wait and accumulate the bugs and errors in the code. If there is any problem, a code fix will be done. Automated process will deploy to everywhere and will make the test quickly. So mean time to repair will be very short. It will be very well agile. 
and no human intervention or very very less human intervention no human intervention is better actually so you try to achieve with your continuous delivery pipeline no human intervention okay in such cases when you're running your pipeline and if you happens to have any bug or any error in your pipeline or in the code it can be isolated very quickly and you can fix it okay now let's see the tools that we are going to use for this project Jenkins is going to be our continuous integration server. We are going to use Git for the version control system. Maven will be our build tool because we have Java code. Checkstyle we are going to use for code analysis. Slack for notification will be using. Nexus Sonatype repository. So our build tool Maven is going to download dependencies from Nexus repository and also going to upload our artifact. The artifact that we generate from the continuous integration pipeline will be uploaded to Nexus repository. It's going to be a software repository. Sonar Cube server for code analysis, much more code analysis actually in detail. Apache Tomcat server we are going to use where we are going to deploy our artifact. So we're going to deliver our artifact to Apache Tomcat server. And we'll also have some backend services like MySQL, Memcache, and RabbitMQ. If you're done a vProfile project deployment, you know what are the services I'm talking about. We're gonna provision all this on the EC2 instances. Selenium, we're going to use for software testing. We're going to conduct the software testing on a Windows server. So we'll create a Windows server and we'll add it as a slave to Jenkins. And we're going to perform software testing by using Selenium in, on that Windows server. And this will happen all automatically. Every time there is a deployment to the server, Selenium test scripts will get automatically executed and return the result. All this will be setting up on AWS Cloud. We'll be using AWS EC2 instances. And on EC2 instances, we're going to set up Jenkins, Nexus, SonarCube, Tomcat, MySQL, Windows Server, yeah, I know there are many, but when you need to have a continuous delivery pipeline, you need to create all those things. Okay, the objectives. So we want fault isolation quickly. We want short MTTR. We want fast turnaround time. So if there is any new request, any new code change, it can be built quickly by the developer and can be also delivered very quickly. So that's what fast turn around time means here. And less disruptive. Once everything is automated, you have entire continuous delivery pipeline, then there are very less chance of making human error. No human error actually when the pipeline is going on. So it's gonna be less disruptive. All right, so let's achieve our goals. Okay, now we'll see architecture of continuous delivery pipeline and also the flow of execution, how we're going to execute this entire project. Okay, so this is the design. So first thing, developer makes a code change. Once you have a continuous delivery pipeline set up, then this entire process will execute automatically. So developer makes a code change into a remote repository. We are using, we are going to use GitHub. So as soon as there is a new commit in GitHub, Jenkins server or automation server is going to fetch the latest changes automatically, build it, run some test, unit test or code analysis, all the kinds of tests and give the information to the developer on Slack or whatever they're using. We're going to use Slack for notification. Then the next job in the pipeline will get executed, which is actually going to package the artifact, version it and store it on some remote repositories, remote software repository like Nexus Sonatype. We're going to use Nexus Sonatype repository. Once that is done, a notification is sent. The next job then gets triggered automatically, which is going to deploy the artifact to staging environment. Once it is deployed to staging environment, there'll be a few more tests conducted, integration test, load test, any software testing. So there will be a software testers test scripts we are going to execute that from a Windows server, which is going to check our staging environment. 
for any bugs, any errors. If everything is good, then again the notification will be sent. The artifact can then be stored to somewhere else for production deployment or like S3 or you can keep it in Nexus repository also. And this will be a very well tested artifact. Now same artifact you can deploy it on production. Now in continuous delivery, we don't automatically deploy it to production. In continuous delivery, we are done till here and we wait for the approval. We have the artifact stored now, which is well tested, deployed and again tested. We are waiting for the approval. Once we have the approval, we are going to trigger a job which is going to do deployment to production environment and few more tests will be conducted. So it will be a manual trigger. Okay, let's see the flow of execution. So first, we're going to log into AWS account. We're going to do all on AWS EC2 instances. First, we'll create a login key. We'll create security group for Jenkins, Nexus, and SonarCube server. We'll create EC2 instances with user data. We'll create first Jenkins, SonarCube, Nexus, and we'll do Jenkins post installation steps. We'll set up Nexus repository with three repositories inside it, Maven repositories. Then we're going to do SonarCube post installation steps. Then we'll do Jenkins setup. We're going to first set up build job. We'll set up Slack notification. We'll set up check style code job. This job is going to do code analysis with check style. Then we're going to set up SonarCube integration. We're going to set up, integrate SonarCube server with Jenkins. We'll set up a job which will do code analysis by using Sonar scanner and upload it to SonarCube server. The next job we're going to set up to upload our tested artifact to Nexus repository. Finally, we're going to connect all the jobs together with build pipeline. And we'll also set automatic build trigger. So whenever there is a code change, this pipeline gets triggered. Till here, it's continuous integration pipeline. So then we'll make some code change with Git. We're going to push a new code and which will actually trigger this pipeline. Okay. So you will see continuous integration pipeline. And now we're going to extend this further. Continuous delivery is extension of continuous integration. So first, when you have continuous integration pipeline, then we'll set up continuous delivery pipeline. So then we need some server. We're going to create security group for a Windows server and Tomcat and backend server. We'll set up Tomcat and backend server on EC2 instance with user data. So automatically we'll provision these instances. We'll create then a Jenkins job to deploy our artifact to staging server. Staging Tomcat server will deploy the artifact from Jenkins. Then we'll add a Windows node as a slave to Jenkins. We are doing this so we can execute our software test cases from here. So we'll create a job. That job will execute on Windows server. It will execute our Selenium test suite. Then once this is done, we'll deploy the artifact to production server. By now we'll have many more jobs and then we're going to finally connect all the jobs in the build pipeline together and we'll test it by making a code change. Now when we make a code change, it will fetch the code, build the code, test it, deploy it to staging environment, again run more tests and then finally deploy it to production environment. Production environment will be with approval. So we're going to do production deployment manually. The trigger will be manual. Job will execute automatically, but the trigger will be manual. Okay, so there are a lot of things to do. Let's get started now. Okay, so first we are going to set up a continuous integration pipeline. In the first half of the project, we have continuous integration pipeline. And in the second half, we're going to extend that to continuous delivery pipeline. If you have already done continuous integration job on Jenkins, the complete continuous integration project, if you already have ready on Jenkins, you can skip to the second half and continue from continuous delivery. So first half is continuous integration. As you see on the screen, we're going to set up this first. Once this is done, we will extend it to this continuous delivery pipeline that will be in the second half. So let's get started.